On the outskirts of the national capital today, black limousines with darkened windows converged on a hotel where private security guards imposed ironclad control. The limos carried royalty, political power brokers, and industrial titans to a secret meeting that will last all weekend. It's known as the Bilderberg Group. Could their objective be world domination? Every four years, Bilderberg meets in North America. And in June of 2006, we decided to travel to Ottawa, the capital of Canada. The site of Bilderberg. In Bilderberg's long history, many reporters attempting to cover the group have been harassed, detained, and even jailed. I jokingly reassured my cameramen that the horror stories we'd read about were probably exaggerated. I was wrong. We know reporters get detained at airports, people aren't let in. We know people get uh, uh, you know, sent to the jailhouse for three or four hours. It happens every time. Well, it happened to Alex Jones this time. They admitted Bilderberg, that they've had pressure put on them by the government uh, to heighten security, and that that's why all this happened. Yes, I was told that by two separate people. They scoured our records for hours yesterday and hours today, trying to find something on us, and of course there was nothing. It was just scary. I mean, I've, again, I've been all over the world, and I've never seen anything like this. It was like hours of humiliation. And they said, what are you here for? And I said, well, I'm here to, you know, cover the media, co covering a political event, I hope to talk to some members of Parliament. I was answering all the questions. It was clear I wasn't a threat. It was clear I didn't have any criminal record. It was clear I was pressed. It was clear I was coming to interview people. They were going to deny me. They told me earlier that, 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 that I was probably going to be denied. And then you guys showed up, and everything changed. So what's your plan now? My plan is to go out and try to interview Jim Tucker, try to go down to the Bilderberg Group and maybe catch some of them still arriving, and try to still make a documentary. So instead of being here at 8 a.m. in the morning when the Bilderberg Group attendees, the 100 elite of the planet, start showing up, we're going to be getting here about 3.30 or so. And see if we can catch any of the elites uh, coming in. on the agenda for this uh, this edition of the Bilderberg Society of Planning Meeting? They're debating the attack on Iran. They're talking about how to take out Hugo Chavez. They're talking about how to get their American Union in that destroys Canadian, U.S., and Mexican sovereignty. So we're talking about the death of Canada is what's happening in there right now. The death of your sovereignty is happening in there right now. CNN has even reported that these individuals have put out the policy reports through the Council on Foreign Relations that writes their scholarly white papers to end the United States, to end Canada, and to end Mexico. About 10 have come in. They've been coming in slowly uh, in typically big black cars with what appears to be bulletproof glass and we've got a few pictures of some of the people uh... we're being kept well back from the building by an awful lot of uh... security people but you know there'll be more security as this thing develops again just a reminder to stay off the front okay? i am i am Th this is the line we checked with the city Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I came here from uh, upstate New York. I booked a room way in advance. When I checked in at 10 o'clock at night, they told me I had to be out at 8.30 in the morning. And so, of course, I complied to what they wanted. I wasn't happy about it because I had been tired. I drove quite a long way. Then I uh, went down to uh, have something to eat. And I just saw a bunch of security here, and I was wondering what was going on, and I asked questions. And uh, they said they were having a wedding or they were having some sort of reception. So I decided uh, to ask a couple more questions because I thought it was kind of weird. And then I saw them uh, from my hotel window. They were in the back, 
with flashlights looking at the trees, looking up the, through the trees, and they were also in front of the hotel, uh, combing, it looked like combing the hotel. So I kind of got, was wondering what was going on, and I left. Uh, I got up this morning, uh, I checked out, and then the, the fellow that I spoke with, the last fellow I spoke with said, well, you'll know all about it in, in the newspaper. Well, I didn't have to wait because there was a group of people out here telling me everything that was going on. They're not fooling anybody any, any longer when you've got this many cops, you know, and detaining Alex Jones at the border. Get him on both sides. Yeah, you crook. Yeah, you're going to go to jail like Ken Lay. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Hi. Hey, we're not your property. We're not your slaves. We're going to defeat the New World Order. The New World Order is going to be defeated. You realize that? I'm glad you did. Always does throughout history. Etienne Davignon is the honorary chairman of the Bilderberg Group, as well as the head of its steering committee. The committee he heads selects and invites each year's attendees. In the last decade, the list of attendees has been leaked to reporters by moles on the inside. Veteran newspaper reporter Jim Tucker has been covering the Bilderberg meetings for over 30 years and has physically attended more than 20. We traveled back to our hotel to see if Jim Tucker received the 2006 list. First heard about Bilderberg in 1975 and I said, I don't believe it. That's not possible. Who in, who in hell is Bilderberg? I spent 20 happy years with metropolitan newspapers. All the wires are clicking at my ear. That could not happen without me knowing about it. And the thing that first impressed me most was caused in 1957 by the late, great Westbrook Pegler, a widely syndicated columnist. He wrote two lengthy columns about how approximately 100 leaders of international finance, heads of state, high public officials were meeting behind armed guards and closed doors on Jekyll Island, sealed off. What are these powerful internationalists doing? And why is it so secret? Why do they have armed guards outside? Why is it sealed off? The newspapers totally ignore it. Not a word. Total blackout in the United States. Since then, I've never stopped pursuing Bilderberg or the whole international gangster organization led by Rockefellers and Rothschilds as they manipulate the world for their own selfish interest. Jim, you've been waiting on the list. You normally get it on the first day. You haven't gotten it. We're told it might come in today. How important is that list? It's absolutely essential, although Identifying people outside, as we always do, is important too, to find out who is not on their own list. In recent years, someone from Europe has uh, sent a machine copy with a letter and so forth without identifying himself. So far, I haven't heard from him. Well, Bilderberg assumed that name in 1954 at their first meeting as Bilderberg at the Bilderberg Hotel. It's a little bit like Shakespeare's As You Like It. They said to Shakespeare, what do you want to call this book? And he says, As You Like It, meaning whatever you want to call it. And they thought it was dictation, so one of the, uh, his plays is called As You Like It, and the title has nothing to do with the play. So that's how the Bilderberg came by their name. Now, they had been meeting for half a century, the moneyed class had been meeting. But they decided they have to meet 
systematically every year, uh, well planned in advance, in, uh, in addition to maybe uh, other smaller needs throughout the year. Sure this is the right turn, Jim? 